Attendance on Demand presents ESS Mobile. Time tracking for employees on the go. In today's session, you will learn about the benefits and the features of ESS Mobile. ESS Mobile End User for the employee is smart, adaptive, and mobile. Employee self-service, also known as ESS, mobile from attendance on demand is adaptive. The employee home screen is changeable based on what the employee needs to do and how the employee works. The benefits of ESS mobile. Convenient, use anytime, anywhere. User-friendly, the app operates in real time, Timely information for better decisions. It's an adaptive app with easy deployment. ESS Mobile. The app is free and downloadable. Visit your Google Play Store for Android devices. And for iPhone or Apple devices, visit the Apple Store. Look for the icon you see displayed here, ESS Mobile Attendance on Demand, and it's a free download. Once you've downloaded the app, you'll come to a screen that asks you to download the Attendance on Demand server name to connect. This information should be provided to you by your employer or your payroll administrator. You will only need to enter this code one time only unless you uninstall and reinstall the app then you would need to download this information or enter it again. Here we see the ESS mobile landing screen. This is what we call our landing screen here. So we're going to look at the features that are provided here in the landing screen. So first we have the greeting. At the top you will always see hello along with the employee's name. The next thing you will see is a bell or, or a call out and it will have a orange colored ball around it. Those are action items, items that require your attention or response. We'll talk a little bit further in detail about these as we get through the presentation. The time and dis date is displayed for you. Please note the punch in is where you would record punches. So you have not punched in for the day, this is where you would see the punch in. If you had already punched in for the day, it would be punched out. In the box below, you see the work schedule. It shows you several things in that box. And lastly, the hamburger menu. So those are those three horizontal bars that we see going across the top there that will take us into a different window. So once we click on the hamburger menu, what you see displayed here is that it actually takes you into this menu item here. So if we click in the blue area, it will take us into another menu, which we'll talk more in detail about what all these various tiles mean. So how does it all work? Well, let's take a look. Now we are actively in the app, and of course, we see the hamburger menu as we saw in the previous features. So let's click on the hamburger menu. So that opens up another menu here for us, and we can see displayed here, we have a photo of the employee, and we have her name displayed here, first and last name. We have the facility that she works at, the position, and any licensing information concerning the employee. So let's click here. So when we double click, it brings us to this screen called My Information. 
So this screen is kind of your your playing ground where you can enter information about yourself, different preferences. So first we have my picture, contact information, contact preferences, my rotation, work position preferences, and work distance preferences. So let's take a look at the my picture. We're going to double click on this tile here. It's going to open us up another screen. So if this is permitted by your employer, it will allow you to browse and upload a work suitable photo. In other instances, your employer may have elected to already have downloaded the app picture for you. So it really depends on what the employer allows or does not allow. So just say for this sake, we uploaded the picture and we would click save and just hit the back button and then we'll see it here in the first tile. The next tile is your contact information. So let's just click in there. So your contact information, you can indicate your primary phone number. So when the bar turns blue, it allows you to actually type in the line there your phone number, a secondary contact number if you prefer, and an email address. And then you would just hit the save button here and it saves the information. It shows you the changes are accepted. So next tile we would look at is contact preferences. And we have a preference to either receive or not receive email notifications. Right now, pretty much everything is set to the blue side, which means that we have the email notifications on, the app notifications, text notifications, where we would like the text sent to. We can select our primary or secondary number. And we can also send a test message. And it gives us the ability to type in whatever our test message is and save it. So if we didn't want any of these features turned on, like email notifications, we would just slide the bar over there and you would not get any of those email notifications. Okay. So we would just save and go back. So my rotation, this is the next tile. We would look at, in this tile, what your work availability is. So in order to do that, we would just click New Rotation. And it asks us to add the work preference rotation. So she's going to add one for a two-week period, which is bi-weekly. And she, wanna work, she wants to work hourly intervals, meaning hour on the hour. And this is going to begin on December 20th of 2018 and she can save it. Okay, so we're gonna save that there. So now this shows her work pattern and she decides that she wants to work from 6 a.m. from Thursday to Thursday. So she would start at 6 a.m., so that's green. And then it would be until 4 p.m on Thursday and she could do the same you know just across the board see if she wanted to work Thursday to Thursday and these are her times that she's available and that's what she would indicate here by selecting these okay. and that gives us our new rotation now she has the ability to save it add a new one, or we'll remove rotation. Okay, let's go back and back again. So now we want to look at the work position preference. So it tells us the changes we're saying. Now we would like to look at the work position preferences. And this says the type of work I'm able to do is CNA. And she would save it. This way, when they're searching for a CNA in the schedule, it applies the preferences and it will display here in the screen. So it shows that she has CNA preferences. Okay, and she's not working any other position, so that is her primary position, which will show each time. 
so we're back on this landing screen here so if we look at the work schedule it displays the date the shift the start and end time and the total number of hours along with the position that you would be working so this would be for the current period so it allows you to see your schedule at a glance so if we were to click into the 16th which is the beginning of the pay period it brings up the time card details and it says okay that this person is working today from 8 a.m. to 4 30 and then they're picking up another shift later that night okay uh, November 16th for the morning looks like she didn't make her shift so she's she was absent okay and then it just kind of scrolls down to the bottom and just gives you an overview of what the total work work we work week was for. This here probably looks very similar or familiar to you because you've probably seen it in math class. It's the sum sign. So if we click here in the sum sign, it'll show that there are pay accumulations. So if we, so it looks like if we click in one where she's actually working or what she's already worked, it will show her where she's located, that she's actually on the premises right now, currently working, and for her title, CNA. So this is her work schedule details. Okay, let's go back. Now, so today, we see that today is November 20th, and we're going to look at clicking here. Okay. So November 20th is her current day. It shows us where she's working and what time, okay? From there, we're gonna punch her in for today. So let's punch in, Jennifer's gonna punch in. So now, she's beginning her work shift and she's gonna be working in the assistant living unit. And she can add this or, or leave it blank. But for the sake of this example, we're just going to say she's going to work in system living. We're going to hit press submit to continue and save. Okay, her punch has been recorded. Punch recorded November 20, 2018 at 2.21 p.m. And we'll just press OK. Now, if you notice here, this tile has changed to punch out and it is recorded her time immediately here at the top and she can see it displayed in the app. So now let's turn our attention to the little orange ball here. It has a number in it. So what this is, these are action items as we showed in the display of the preview of the app. So it looks like there's a bell, so there are some alarms or things that really need our attention right away and there's a call out for various types of communications that she may have received. So let's click here on the orange ball. Okay, so it's taking us in. So it's letting us know because she was looking for some different um, schedule or wanted to trade with someone that November 20th, uh, there was a trade posted by Weldon Autumn, CNA, and saying they're interested in looking to work this schedule. She received another offer from Wilbert Richard saying he will pick up the trade pick up the schedule without a trade. So there's no trade off. Whereas Weldon here, he wants to trade her November 20th date for his November 30th date. So let's look in here. We're going to click in here. And she can either pick up the schedule or offer the swap. So we're going to offer a swap and she says uh, offer to exchange schedules and we're going to say uh, December 1st or December, okay. So this is the thing, I'm interested in working the schedule. So now we know that this is here, this is the offer to trade. So she has a couple of other things that she can say, okay, I will trade you this schedule 
for my November 26th schedule from 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And she's interested in working the schedule. Okay, we can trade. I'll type that in for my November 26th schedule. Great. Okay, she saves it and this will send the message back out to him. Pick up trade offer request. Okay. So there's a couple of other things in here and you notice that it goes away. So here's another offer that was received. Let's click in it. And there's a trade offer pickup. So we're going to just withdraw that offer. She decided she doesn't work. I'm withdrawing my attempt to trade this work schedule. Say, done. So request withdrawn, and it denotes it here, and we'll just go back. Okay. So now that she's addressed this one, uh, we can go back, and she can look at the next one here. So here's another schedule posted for trade. And this one looks like it's already been offered and they're just waiting on approval back. So she either has the option to leave all of the messages there if she wants to review them or she could simply dismiss them all and it'll tell you there's no unread messages and if she wanted to go back and review something she could look at prior messages or just go back so she won't see anything there and if you'll notice they all cleared away here at the top so now she does not have any action items that she needs to respond to next we'll move to our hamburger menu where we were originally and we show that there were open items we already looked at these here so we know that all of these have already been addressed so we just go back And then, well, these may be new open items, so let's look. Yeah, the 24th. Okay, so let's open this one, November 24th. And I'm interested in working your schedule. She changed her mind, and I'll keep my schedule, withdraw the offer. Same. All right. So now, it says the offer was withdrawn. So we're going to go in here. Okay. And then we'll go back. So now it looks like she requested some time off for January 1st to January 2nd. It's like she has another request in here from the 15th to the 16th. So these are in pending status and we'll take a look at how to request time off. It looks like she has some in here already that are pending. They've been submitted and she's just waiting on a response from the supervisor. So we'll just click on one to take a look. So she's like, oh, well, I'm going to just wait for her response there. And then she takes a look at another one. She opens up for February 15th. She says, uh, i got to change my mind. I want to just let my PTO accumulate more. So she's going to remove it. Okay. And then save it. Freely submitted request has been removed. In some instances, there may be a window where you may have a certain number of hours or a certain number of days in which you can reach, remove your PTO request. In an instance such as that and you've passed the three day mark or the two hour mark, whatever it may be, then it will not allow you to perform that function. Okay, so we will now move to the calendar. So we see we have our calendar here and you see a lot of blue bubbles with the dates inside of them. These are the scheduled working days for the entire month. And you'll notice you can either go to the left to go back a previous month, or you can go into the current month, or you can arrow to look at the next month for any projected things. So let's go back into November where we were. And now it shows you that you're in November 2018. Um, it looks like she has some scheduled working time on this day. And let's, there's another menu here. So let's go into the menu. 
Now the menu lets us filter things. So we can set a filter to say, okay, I only want to see certain items. So depending on what you turn off, like maybe she doesn't want to see her uh, pay accumulation. So just turn those off and go back. So it's not going to show her any pay accumulations here now that we turn that off. So we go back into the menu and we set another filter and we don't know if anyone would ever choose this, but she doesn't want to see her uh, work schedule. So no available workshop. She doesn't want to see that back. So this is what we get here based on your preferences. Okay. Then our menu also, if we click back in, it allows us, this is where we request time off. Okay, so for time off, she's like, okay, I think I really need to take some time off. Let me look and see here what's going on. So I think I want to take off uh, Christmas Day. So you know Christmas Day is her start date. And she just wants to take off until uh, the end of that week to spend time with family. So we'll hit next. And then she's going to use uh, PTO and says she has none available. Wow. So let's let's select her vacation time. And it just depends on whether or not your employer provides either a PTO bucket, a sick bucket, and a vacation, or it could just be all PTO. So as we can see here, she does not have any PTO available, but she has a lot of sick hours accumulated. But this isn't really that scenario. She has vacation time, 64 hours. So let's select vacation, and she is uh, vacationing with family for Christmas holiday. Okay, and we're going to save it. Changes have been accepted, and there's nothing further to do here, so we just go back. We're back at our home screen. So, next we are going to look at the next menu item here, which we've done the calendar. Let's take a look at our timeline. So in the timeline, she doesn't have anything showing right away, and it populates, sometimes it's a little delayed. So as we can see, she has her work schedule here, there's the date, she has the start time for her shift, the end time for a shift, the total duration of hours or length of the shift, and the position that she's working. And this is displayed throughout here. As you can see, the timeline offers many different preferences to determine what will be displayed. So you can either have more or less items displayed in the menu based on your preferences. As we can see here, this person only chooses to have the pay period begin and also shows um, time off request. So let's go back here and we're going to go back into the hamburger menu and the next item that we're going to look at in the menu is operations. Operations contains several selections, which include leave a message, call in an absence, running late, and transfer. So let's take a look at leave a message. Let's click here. So we're going to leave a message for our supervisor, and we're just going to say here, uh, leaving one hour early today due to a dentist appointment. And then we'll just save the message. And as we save the message here, it says thank you. So we know that the message has been now recorded. Back into the hamburger menu, we'll go back into operations. We'll look at the second item, 
which is called an abscess. So we're going to say here that she's calling it an abscess. Um, let's see. I will be absent today. to <clears throat> allergic reaction. And then we will save. And as we save again, you can see it captures the message there. So we'll go back to the next item in the operations tab which is running late. So she's scheduled to be on the shift this morning at 7 a.m. So say she says she's gonna be eight hours late. Her reason is uh, locked her car keys in the car. And she's awaiting AAA for service. Estimated arrival is 8 a.m. And we will go ahead and save that message. And it, captured it captures it here. Okay. And we'll look at the last item now in our operations menu, which is the transfer. So right now, she's uh, the division is Mishcare, the nursing department. Her primary job code is a certified nursing aide. But they're running a little bit short staff today. So she's going to transfer into a job code to cover for the receptionist for a minute as an administrative assistant for a Detroit care location. And the department that she's going to help out today is assisted living. And then we will just say it captures the transfer. And then we are all done. And you would just go back here to go back into the operations menu. Or you could just simply return back to your landing screen. So what you have saw today will help guide you in the functionality and using the system efficiently. If there are any further questions or concerns, remember where you can always reach out to ALD and our service technicians will be able to provide additional help. Thank you.